Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this stop motion map effect. If you're a Flatpak FX crew member, then you can download the project file. And I've also included this bonus composition with all of the files as well as the main composition that we're going to be working on. Now, if you're not already a member and you're interested in joining, then you can check it out via the same link in the description below. So the first thing I've got here is just like a paper texture. I'm just gonna create a new composition. This can be whatever you like and I'm just gonna drop this paper texture straight in there. That's gonna be basically a background here. Now, all I'm gonna to do to this paper texture first is add a tint. Now you can find this by searching for it up here. And all I've done is I've mapped the black to something that's a little bit lighter here, something that's got a little bit of warmth in it. And the white I've also just made a little bit warmer as well. So that just kind of gives us a nice background to work with. Now, if I turn on my New York map, so I want to start basically cutting this out into sections. Now, the way that we can do that is by simply adding a few different effects here. Now, these are all the ones that I've added. You can add these by basically just coming up here and searching for them and dragging them on top. The first thing we're going to do is add a tint effect and you can sort of set this black to something like a dark blue, whatever color that you want. It's really just to kind of give it a, a different color. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of brightness and contrast just to really sort of help exaggerate that contrast. And then I'm using the extract. So the extract, if I turn off my background, basically removes that lighter part of my image. So I'm just dragging down on this slider here to remove that lighter part of my image and then I can add my background texture back in. Now, once I've kind of got that, what I can do is I can then grab my pen tool. And for instance, what I'm going to do is just sort of single out an area here. Maybe something like this. So I'm just sort of singling out this point here. Now, what I want to do to that is I want it to start wiggling. So that's the first thing. So what I'm gonna do is hit P on the keyboard, hold Option or Alt on my keyboard and add a wiggle expression. And I'm gonna type out wiggle three comma two close bracket. And this will give it basically, it'll make it move around the screen. You can increase either, num uh, either one of those numbers. That'll basically speed it up and also move it around more. You can kind of set what you want for those numbers. I find this works quite well for this sort of effect. Now, if you like these sort of videos and you want to learn more about how to design animations like this, or even how to use After Effects more effectively, then definitely check out my Animation Master or my Animation Pro course. Animation Master is for basically absolute beginners never having used sort of After Effects before. In that, I'll walk you through all the basics of how to use the program right through to actually how to create some really cool animations that you can use in your own videos. I've had hundreds of students go through this course and get fantastic results. If you're more of an intermediate and you're more comfortable using After Effects and you wanna dive deeper, then check out my Animation Pro course. In that, I dive into more complex techniques, dive a lot deeper into design and animation, and how to use After Effects more effectively for working on larger compositions and timelines. If you're someone who's already done some of my training, then that is a great next step for you to take. There's tons of student testimonials that you can read for both courses. You can check them out via the links in the description below. These two courses are really going to take your animations to that next level and really help you become a much more effective After Effects user and also much more comfortable creating your own animations for your own videos. And then what I can do is basically with my pen tool, I can draw another mask over this sort of following this line here, something like that, and then just sort of select this area. And with this mask, what I'm gonna do is set this one to be the intersect, because I only want this section. So once I've got that, what I'm gonna do is hit P on the keyboard, and I wanna create a position keyframe right about there. And then I'm gonna go across and hit an, and create another one. The one at the beginning, I'm just gonna drag this off the screen so it sort of moves into that position. Now you can also hit R and add a bit of a rotation keyframe. I'm hitting U to bring up those keyframes. And if I hit W on the keyboard, I can rotate this around, something like that. So we sort of get that movement like that. Now you don't need to smooth this out. The reason being that what we're gonna do is create an adjustment layer 
And to this adjustment layer, what we're going to do is add the posterized time effect and scale this right down to say six. So what that's going to do is you'll see it starts to really give us that stop motion sort of effect. So with these two things sort of playing out, really makes it look quite good. Now it's just a matter of basically rinse and repeat. So I'm gonna duplicate that top layer, that New York map. And with my mask, what I'm gonna do is with the second mask, I'm gonna set this to be subtract. And that will now, if we turn off that bottom one, should just reveal the top part. So with this one, what we're going to do, or all we need to do is just hit P and line our playhead up here with the start and just sort of move it up because we want this one to sort of move in from the top position. So you can see basically that's all that we've done as far as positioning those layers. Now, all I've done is I've basically repeated those few steps and added in the other sections of my map. And the other thing I did was just add a bit of a border. You don't have to do anything like that. It's just a design element to add into it to make it look nice. So all that I did to these extra layers here was I just added the rough and edges effect. So you can search for this up here, drag it here on top, make sure that it's on top of all of the other effects that you have applied. And these are the settings that I've used here. Basically you can use it by just dragging up and down on the border size. You don't really need to mess around too much with the other things. Then to those layers, all I've done is I've just basically moved the positions following the exact same steps we did before to kind of create all the different pieces of the map coming together. Now the other part of this is basically just to create a null object. And this you can also rename to your controller. And this adjustment layer is going to be the posterize. And what we can do is basically link all of these to that controller so that that now becomes basically the controller for us to zoom in and out of our animation. Now what I want to do is basically just kind of create a bit of a line. So I'm just gonna make sure I got nothing selected. You can set this to be whatever color that you like. And then I'm just gonna basically kind of create a bit of a line that goes through here. And for this line, you can scale it up as much as you like. And to this, what I'm gonna do is also link that to that controller because we want it to follow that controller, move it down here. And under these properties, I'm just gonna add a bit of a trims path. And to the trims path, we can simply just animate this. Something else that I also did here in my original one was I added just a basically a dotted line. So I followed the exact same steps that I just showed you for that line. But what I do is I come down here to the contents and under the shape path, you can go down to the stroke settings and here you can add basically dashes. So you can scale up on the dashes and then if you wanna add more or less dashes, you can basically scale this up or down. That'll add more or less dashes that you can basically animate over the top. The other thing that I also added in here was some text. And to make the text, all I do is I basically just right click, type out my text. For my font, what I'm using is the American typewriter. You can use whatever you like. Nothing too special about just creating some text there. And then what I can do is I can animate that by using just the typewriter effect. So again, I just come up here to the typewriter. You can come down to the animation presets and just drag that typewriter effect on top of your text. If you hit U, it'll automatically bring up those keyframes. If you drag in on the second keyframe, it'll speed up or slow down that animation for you. So that's how you create that text. The other thing I did, you'll notice that it sort of fades slightly on those layers. So I took the layer that I wanted to basically fade it. I go to the point that I want the transition to start and then I'm going to basically change either the white or the black. In this case, I'm gonna change the black, go across a little bit more. And then what I can do is actually just change this by dragging it up. So you'll see here, it's actually affecting that image. I can sort of desaturate this, drag it up like that. And if you hit U, you can bring up those keyframes. You'll notice it transitions from the darker to the lighter section. That's all that I did to create that. And maybe when the camera gets to about here or the timeline, what I can do is hit S on my keyboard, create a scale keyframe, hit P, create a scale a position keyframe, and if I go along on my timeline here, I'm holding shift, I can sort of scale in here to wherever I need the camera to animate. 
and there you go. That's pretty much how I created all of this. So that's it for this video. Again, if you wanna check out this project file, you can download the projects via the Flatpak Effects crew. I also include this bonus composition in the project file and all of the media that you're going to need. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you wanna check out more videos just like this one, you can watch them over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.